just to give you a bit of a background, uh, you can probably establish I'm not from here either. I'm from, I'm from London, and I've just spent the last five years as an early years teacher in what we call the foundation stage at home. Um, during that time, I was also lucky enough to um, get a grant to become a forest school leader and take that training. Um, and that became something I was really, really passionate about. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But the reason I mention it is because it's easier enough for me to say to you, take your kids outdoors, go, go forth. But I do understand firsthand the barriers you will face in there. <laughs> and I do understand firsthand the benefits of it, which is why I'm so passionate about it. I've seen children be transformed from a school or a setting where there was not much outdoor play, not much nature play, and then how are they been transformed physically, emotionally, holistically, um, through, through methods of nature-based learning. Um, why I'm here today, however, I've just started working with Nature Play, and Nature Play as an organisation are dedicated to advocating more opportunities for nature-based play throughout Queensland. Um, sadly, we've come into play because of a change in childhood, as we know it. Um, lots and lots of this, to put it quite bluntly, and not much of these wonderful experiences. iPads. <coughs> Instead of muddy runs. <laughs> Memorable experiences, maybe a few injuries, <laughs> risk taking. <laughs> but needless to say, beautiful examples of how we remember our childhood. Lots of this is sadly lost. Um, this was a study that was done, I apologise, it is a little bit out of date, 2010, but it's quite scary because it, I would imagine the statistics are even worse today. Um, children are spending 1,900 hours on average a year on their screens and considerably less with their family and friends. Very sad. And I have to say it's the same in the UK. <laughs> Not preaching at you. Um, Australian kids are taking 200 fewer steps per day than is required. And as a result, there's the phrase that's going around at the moment, I've heard lots since I've been here in Queensland, that sitting is the new smoking. <laughs> it's been thrown around a lot, but it does have some, some truth. Uh, Australian children are spending under two hours outside per day. Uh, that is actually less than high detained prisoners. So that's a scary statistic as well. Um, and why? We know why, as, as early, early as specialists. Uh, technology, uh, stranger danger strat uh, strategies that maybe got taken a little bit out of hand media, and particularly in schools and centres, um, we have a huge fear of mitigation and risk. I've certainly been there. Um, because of that, Nature Play this year are actually beginning to focus more on supporting schools in early years. Um, we're currently developing some pre-made risk assessments, which can be slightly adapted for you. Um, we are looking at mitigation um, templates, um, that is to councils, things like that, lesson plans, obviously, um, and outdoor learning policies. So all of these things that, to be honest, you've got more exciting, more impressive things to be doing. If we can do that for you, it makes everything easier. So keep posted on the website for those. Um, because it is important. If children aren't taking these risks, yes, they might get injured, but they're not developing physically as much as they could, socially, and also um, even simple things, core strength isn't being developed as it should. Children also, we've got some kids up a tree here, but are beginning to, statistics show, lose the ability of calculating risk. So, as Susanna mentioned, walking on uneven ground, I know from experience in, in England, there's so many centres now which have just flat very easily manageable ground for safety because they're worried your children's falling over and they're never going to learn, in common sense, how to negotiate these sorts of grounds, how to climb a tree. If they don't have experience, a child is going to go up high and get stuck. Um, but if they've learned from a young age, a few branches, I know it's scary <laughs> letting children climb the trees and I know each setting has different policies, but 
they will learn to go as far as they can to safely get down. Uh, so in summary, doom gloom, um, <laughs> about a bad child. Um, children are playing less outdoors, we know that. As a society, we know that. It's sad. Um, as early as educators, we're in a position to begin this change. Um, they're engaging in less and less physical activity. Outside of school, yes, it's predominantly, but also inside of uh, earlier centres and things as well. They're taking less risks. Um, risk is always seen as a bad word, but it can be very positive. Um, that's a whole other presentation. Um, and certain areas of child development are just simply in decline. The focus is elsewhere, and um, they're missing out. So, or positively, what can we do? So, I've only been here a few months, but the, out of the research that I've done around Queensland, I have seen so many examples of amazing people, amazing centres, already engaging in lots and lots of nature play. We've got nature kindies, we've got um, nature weeks going on, little excursions, um, people coming in. Uh, basically, adults are the number one barrier to outdoor play, we know that. Okay, um, so what we need to do as educators is establish this as a healthy habit within our settings from day one. I know that's easier said than done, but that's why we've got to work together. If children are intrinsically motivated, as you know, they will love to go outside. They will love to learn in that outdoor area, even at first, if at first they're a little bit nervous. Um, we know, again, children learn best through play in the early years. Okay, I've seen that, done that. And um, our teacher training and early years training in the UK, from what I gather, is very, very similar. Um, to here in Australia. Play equals fun equals development. It's as simple as that. And children love outdoor play. That's already there for us. And anything we do outside is easily exciting. Um, the benefit of um, the outdoor nature play, as opposed to playing indoors the majority of the day, is that they are also adopting healthy lifestyle. Um, a, a healthy lifestyle. Enjoying the outdoors, being active, all those sorts of side of the benefits, which are enhanced outdoors. Um, well, I won't read it all at this point. However, you can see even just from the physical side of things, as I know this is what we're focusing on today, um, physical health and physical fluency is dramatically enhanced by outdoor play. Um, they increases fine and gross motor skills, of course. Their children are learning to negotiate on a variety of terrains, um, with a variety of experiences. This should then hopefully um, impact onto healthy food choices. Children are learning how to grow, for example, grow vegetables and, and, and live a healthy, active lifestyle. They are just a few of, of many, and, and that's a whole, whole other lecture, and I'm sure you've seen this before. But um, also, it decreases these nasties, which are becoming more and more of an issue. Um, anxiety, stress, fatigue, all of these terrible things are, are becoming more and more common, and outdoor play has been studied and proven to help with this. So what can we do in our settings? From experience, working in two environments that were not doing a great deal of nature play and starting from scratch with a forest school, Get it on a school development plan or a centre development plan. Get it up there. Um, speak to governors, communities, parents, children even. Um, have it as a section in your staff meetings. Have it as a section on your newsletters. Get people talking about it. Um, nature play itself, how can we help? Um, I've just got a few of the resources up here, but there are lots more, so look on the website. We do have nature play passports. They are free. They are free for everybody, as many as you like for your setting. Just log on. I've got one each for everybody out there, but if you go onto the website, you can log on for these. They are a physical passport, which can be used as a home school um, document, really, showing different images and notes from experiences um, outdoors, in school and out. Um, and if they contain hundreds of age-appropriate activities for you to do. And most of them are free. It doesn't involve, um, you don't need bushland or anything like that. Another thing is 99 things to do before you're free. 
You'll see those posters out there. I'll let you have a look at those. But um, they have been developed by paediatricians to help you. And they also contain on the back key development areas, so you know why you're doing it and you can justify it, because I know that's half the job in there. <laughs> Um, the last thing I wanted to share with you, and I was really excited about this when I started at Nature Play because I was actually part of developing a similar program in my early year setting in the UK. It's an app. Now what this will do um, is really cut in half some of that recording time. The observing, the taking photographs, the evidence. Um, it's hundreds of, oh, sorry, it's 99 activities separated into 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. And what they are is once a child has, for example, completed an activity, it will automatically link this to development areas and specific statements. Um, and these were all recorded. You can have up to 30. Um, you can have up to 30 children on one app. And the idea will be, um, like I said, select an activity based on whether they've done it before or age. Um, location, the type of play, whether it's messy, creative, and then the development area. So, for example, physical and, and movement development. Um, very simple, watching birds fly across the sky. Very, very simple. Um, physical development and movement automatically gets highlighted, recorded, and it, it demonstrates that it helps with this visible tracking and um, depth perception. Okay, it's just an idea of helping practitioners, as well as parents, uh, record this learning and a means to justify the outdoor play in, in an environment where I know that that is uh, such, such a pressure. Um, I'll leave you just with the physical development and movement uh, gifts from nature, we call them, which are the areas of development um, that are addressed when playing outside. Okay. Thank you for your time and please help yourself to the free resources and get on our website and uh, sign up for newsletters and things.